Hello there guys, welcome to episode 13 of How to Program in C++. Today we're going to be making our first full program that has multiple outcomes, aka it won't just follow one statement after another, we're going to change it up and let the user choose what they want to do. Uh, and in order to do this we're going to implement a good few of the things that we have learned so far, I feel like this is a good way to show you how to put what you have learned into use. So, uh, we're making a calculator, as I think I said, and it's going to have multiple options. You're going to be able to add, subtract, divide, or multiply, and the user is going to be able to do many actions before they decide to quit, and they can quit whenever they like. Okay, let's get started, because this is going to be quite a big program for us. So far, we haven't written anything to this scale. So first things first, I'm going to make a few variables to hold some values. Uh, I'm going to define choice, value 1, value 2, and a result. And semicolon. Uh, we're going to be using choice to store whatever the user inputs uh, in terms of their choice of whether they want to add, subtract, divide, all that stuff. Uh, we're going to use value one to be the first value in the uh, whatever the user wants to work out. Value two, obviously, the second value. And the result is going to be the result of whatever operation is performed on these two values. So let's get on with programming in the main. First things first, uh, we're going to put a C out right at the top here. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to do this was just to give you guys a little bit of an idea of some good layout practice, I guess. I got asked by someone uh, how I would lay out code, so this is going to be a good starting point, I guess, uh, for that. Sorry, I'm typing so slow. I am... Um it's very difficult to talk about something and type at the same time, it turns out. So, semicolon at the end of that. So, basically, all this is going to do so far, let's just run it, uh, is show a title. It's going to say, Calculator by Knowledge Highway. Obviously, you can put in your own name there and make it your own custom program. Uh, so, next thing, we're going to create the main loop for the program. As I spoke about before, when we went over while loops, most programs have a, a main loop that it will loop through repeatedly until the user decides to exit this program. In this case, we're going to do while, and then I'm actually going to put true in here. Now, I've told you not to do this before, because obviously this will loop infinitely. However, uh, I'm going to teach you about another statement that you can use um, to break out of loops uh, manually, wherever you are in the loop. And that is, in fact, the a break command. Now, if I build and run this, it instantly breaks out of that while true loop. Whereas if I was to take this out and just let it loop around infinitely, it just kind of sits here. And if it weren't for, I, I'm pretty sure Codeblocks is preventing this from crashing. Usually this would just crash because it's looping around infinitely. Anyway, let's get rid of that for now, there that we have that out the way. I'm gonna add another C out. And this time, the C out is going to show our menu. It's going to give the user options to pick from. And the way we're going to have them pick options is we're going to give them a list of different things they can do. And we're going to give put a number beside that option, and then the user just has to enter in the number. There are other ways of doing this, but we're doing it this way to begin with because it's nice and simple for you guys. So, first things first, I'm going to put a 1 and then a period, and then I'm going to write just add, because the first option will be the option to add the numbers together. And then I'm going to space, and then I'm going to put another stream in operator, um, or bitwise shift, although it's not doing that in this case. And I'm actually going to take a new line here. Now, this would be exactly the same as me just putting this next bit of text over here. However, I feel like when you're doing multiple lines into a C out, it's often easier to read if you break it up over multiple lines in the code. Because uh, we don't want this going on to a huge long line of code. The Generally, good practice is to keep your lines as short as possible whilst being readable and such. So, next uh, option we're going to give the user is subtract. 
and then stream in more. And the third option is going to be divide. And then we'll do another slash n. Just putting line breaks in here so it's easier for the user to read. And then finally, multiply will be our last uh, option for operators. You could put in the modulo if you wish. Uh, it's totally up to you. You can customize this however you want. And then finally, uh, the last command I'm going to let them use is exit, because of course they need to be able to exit the program. And I'm going to put two line breaks after this just for aesthetic reasons, so it's easier for the user to read. And then finally, I'm going to write, what would you like to do? Yeah, that sounds good. And then and I'll put a space just so there is a space so when they enter in what they enter in it won't be right against the question mark okay and semicolon after that so so far it, the program will show the uh, opening title message and then display the menu however we've not asked for any input yet so it's kind of pointless it will just loop around this menu forever so let's get the users input and we're gonna use cn and then stream that data into that variable we made earlier called choice. This is where we will get the user's choice of one, two, three, four, or five. Um, so let's take a new line. And first of all, let's just check if choice is equal to five, then break. Now, as I was mentioning earlier, this command here will break out of this while loop. Regardless of what's going on, regardless of whether this is true or false, false this condition is true or false, uh, this break will just say, okay, exit this loop. Exit, exit the loop that I am within. So, in this case, it will go straight on and end the program. So, let's, let's just test that quickly. So, if we enter in 5 here, well, let's try entering something else in quickly. 3, and we've not implemented anything yet, so it just loops back around to the menu. If we enter in 5, then it ends the program. And it's over. Excellent! Let's actually just quickly add a little message after this while loop to show uh, that the user has closed the program. We'll just say something like, bye bye. So semicolon at the end of that. When you quit the program, you hit 5, and the program says bye-bye, and ends itself. Just going to add an extra line break after that, uh, just so it's not touching anything. Okay, so we've got the user's choice. Um, however, we're going to need two values of the user as well, uh, because if it's made it this far, obviously the user has not quit. So we're going to have to ask for two values, because they're, they're going to be doing one of these things. Um, another way to do this would be to check if they have added or subtracted or divided first, and then ask them for the two numbers. But this way is a lot quicker for us, and we're kind of looking to do things fast considering I only have a limited amount of time right now. You can feel free, as I said before, to customize this however you want. So the, f the first uh, thing I'm going to ask the user for is to add the f enter the first value uh, of the operation they would like to perform. So I've just written, please enter the first value. And then we're going to use a C in and we're going to stream that data into a value 1 because that's what we're getting off the user. We're getting value 1 off the user. So let's do the same thing for 2, value 2 even. Um, I'm not going to put a line break because whenever you see in, uh, the, a line break gets inserted regardless. So you don't have to do that. Uh, you'll see it in a minute. So please enter the second value semicolon at the end of that line, C in into a value 2. Excellent. So now the program, I know we're ch testing this a lot, but I just, uh, I want you to test along with me to begin with as well, so you know if anything goes wrong. Uh, it's good earlier on when you're new to programming to test as often as possible just to make sure you're not making any errors. And so if you have made an error, you haven't made many changes since the last time it compiled successfully, so it's easier to narrow down where you've made that error. Okay, so let's enter something other than 5, 2 in this case, and it will ask us for the two values. 
values. And for now, it's just going to loop right back around again because, again, we haven't done anything else in the program. I'm going to exit by hitting 5. Cool. Just going to add another line break down here to make it more readable again. And let's get on moving with this. So now we have already gotten from the user their choice of what they want to do. We've gotten value one and we've gotten value two. So the next thing, the next obvious thing to do would be to calculate the result of what they've asked for. Now there are better ways to do this, but they use concepts I haven't gone over yet. Uh, so we're just going to use what we know just now, and then later on when I introduce those new concepts in future episodes, I'll come back to this and show you how you could implement those uh, new concepts. So anyway, we're going to use a bunch of ifs to determine what the user has picked. So if choice is equal to one, and if we go back up to our menu here, we can see that we've said that choice number one is add. So if choice no equals number one, then we're going to add. So result equals value one plus value two. Uh, and I've put this on the line after the if statement just because it keeps things more readable again. As per usual, you want to keep your lines to a sm uh, as small as possible. In this case, it really wouldn't matter either way. Uh, this isn't a very long statement, but I'm going to put it on a new line nonetheless. And I'm going to tab it out just to show that it is part of this if. Uh, none of this is required. It just makes it your program more readable. So now I'm going to add an else if, as we went for over before. This will, if this is not the case, if this uh, condition comes out as false, then it will go on to this else, and we're doing another if to check if another condition is true. In this case, if choice is equal to 2, and we check this, we've said 2 is subtraction, so result equals value 1, whoops, minus a value 2. And we're going to do another else if, but you can't guess what's next, 3, divide. So, um, if choice equals 3, then result equals value 1 divided by value 2. Remembering that the division sign is forward slash in C++. Finally, else if choice equals 4, result equals value 1, and if you remember, the last one was multiply. So multiplied, and that is star in C++, as we went over before, and that's that's it. So this will perform any any one of the um, options that the user has picked. So let's just finally add the last line of our program, which is going to be C out, and we're just going to output the result. So the result is, and then colon, I'll put a space just for readability, stream in result, and then finally stream in some line breaks just to make everything look real pretty. So good, we have completely written our first program that is semi-useful. I mean, up until now, our programs haven't been very useful, to be honest, but this one could be used. So let's build and run. And what would you like to do? Well, let's try subtracting. Uh, I want to take away from 12, and I want to take away the value 6. And the result is 6. That is correct. How about multiply? I want to multiply 12 by 4. And it is 48. Fantastic. Finally, let's do a divide just to check that. How about 3 divided by 2? And as you remember, we're using integers here, so the result is going to come out as a 1, because it just chops off anything after the decimal. So, that could be done, but let's just quickly fix that, because that could be an issue that you don't want. Uh, now, if we want to fix that, then we're going to have to make both all value 1, value 2, and result floating point numbers. So they're... they're is no problems between data types being interchanged. Uh, so let's go for that. And finally, let's uh, divide. Let's do the same thing again. 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. 
excellent and the user can feel free to exit at any time by hitting five and it will just say bye bye so that is our first full program written uh, it's not the cleanest thing uh, this could be enhanced muchly and just in general most of this could be improved in some way or another now i quickly want to show you how you can build this uh so that you're you can use this anywhere you could give this to a friend and let them run it on their computer well let's first change the build target to release it's not going to make too much of a difference in this case but let's do it anyway and build because we're building the release version of our uh, calculator gonna run it just to check that it does indeed still work and it does so hit 5 and it will exit now I'm gonna show you where you can find this so first of all I'm gonna browse my computer to find the location where this project is saved if you don't know it is where when you first made your project you would have put it in a folder here this is when you would have chosen where you want to put your project so you're looking for this path this folder where this leads to so I'm gonna go find that quickly and I'll get back to you guys in a second so this is the folder where my project is saved and as you can see there's a bunch of stuff here the folder you're looking for is bin now this folder is generated when you build your program so double click on that and as you can see there is a debug release and there is a full release just called release uh, the debug release is wh what we had been building when we had been using the build target debug up here uh, you could distribute the debug build but it's better to distribute the release one so let's go into the release folder and as you can see our program is here lesson one um, it's it's still called lesson one calculator I'm gonna rename it calculator then I'm gonna run it and as you can see you can run this without the need for the compiler at all and you can feel free to add and subtract whatever you want excellent so Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time when we'll get moving with some new concepts.